I'm Jad Abumrad. And I'm Robert Bilwich. Today on Radio Lab, we're going to do what David Eagleman suggests. We're just going to hop around. This is unusual for us, but what the heck. We're going to look at different aspects of death and the other side in no particular order. But here's what we can tell you. We're going to make 11 stops, 11 meditations, shall we call them, on various questions relating to death and dying. And what happens after. But it won't be depressing. No. You just heard the first one. Soul has weight, physician thinks. Here's our second. <clears throat> it comes to us from uh, the guy you just heard, David Eagleman, who is a neuroscientist, but wrote a book called Some, yeah. which is very not neurosciencey <laughs> the, at all. The truth is I haven't talked about this book with any of my science colleagues. Why not? I, I have reasons why, but I'm not sure I want to say them on the radio. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> In any case, uh, the book consists of 40 different versions of the afterlife, and here's one. It's called Metamorphosis, written by David Eagleman, and read by Jeffrey Tambor. The actor. Right. There are, are three deaths. Now, the first is when the body ceases to function, of course. And the second is when the body is consigned or, you know, put in the grave. The third is that moment sometime in the future when your name is spoken for the last time. So, you wait in this lobby until the third death. And there are long tables with coffee and tea, cookies. You can help yourself. And there, there are people here from all around the world. And with a little effort, you can strike up some, well, some convivial small talk. Uh, just be aware that your conversation could be interrupted at any moment by, uh, well, we call them the callers. And what they do is they broadcast your new friend's name to indicate that there will never again be another remembrance of him by anyone on the earth. Your friend slumps, saddened even though the callers, they tell him kindly, look, you're, you're, you're off to a better place. The thing is, no one knows where that better place is or what it offers because no one exiting through that door has returned to tell us. And tragically, many people leave just as their loved ones arrive, since the loved ones were the only ones doing the remembering, and we all wag our heads at that typical timing. Now, not everyone is sad when the callers shout out the next list of names. On the contrary, some people beg and they, they plead. These are generally the guys who've been here a long time. Uh, too long. Take that farmer over there who drowned in a small river 200 years ago. Now get this, his farm is the site of a small college now. And the tour guides each week tell his story. So he, he's, he's stuck. He's, he's miserable. The more his story is told, the more the details drift. He, he's utterly alienated from his name. It, it's no longer identical with him, but it continues to, to bind. And that cheerless woman across the way is praised as a saint, even though the roads in her heart, believe me, were complicated. And I guess that is the curse of this room. Because since we live in the heads of those who remember us, we lose control of our lives and become who they want us to be. (laughs) 